Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to answer the question, was the show The Secret Circle wasted? <music> to give a quick summary about the show, it's about a teen witch named Cassie whose mother dies, so she has to move into a new town to live with her grandmother, but later it is revealed to her by five other teen witches by the name of Diana, Faye, Melissa, Nick, who dies but later in the series get replaced by his brother Jake and Adam, that she is a witch and they have to do a ritual and bind their magic together and create their own circle. But after binding their circle, a host of problems comes to arise. You had witch hunters, demons, and John Blackwell. As I finished this series, I had realized that this show had a great group of characters, except for two I'm going to talk about later in this video, good storylines, and villains that went really well on the show. But before I go on, to answer the question in the beginning, yes, the show was wasted and it ended before it needed to. I want to say before we get into the characters, they're going to be in pairs because two of each characters fit in the same box for me. To start off the discussion about the characters, I want to say that I love all the characters on this show except two but I'll get to them later. Now I say my favorite characters on the show is Faye and Melissa. Faye to me is a character I can relate to the most. She's the Damon of the Vampire Diaries, the Klaus of the originals. She has a great morality that lets her be a free spirit and use her magic as she sees fit, which I love because her magic and spells are one of the best things in the shows. And in my opinion, she's one of the most powerful witches in her circle. Now, I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't on the fence with Melissa in the beginning. She was just a follower and hid in Faye's shadow and had no voice of her own. And her relationship with Nick was alright, but I couldn't get into it. And after his death, it kind of got annoying how her story just revolved around that for a while. But when the writers finally got her out of that stage, I found myself really enjoying her character. She could be a good leader when put in the situation and a good friend when someone needed one. And when thinking back to all the circle members... Those two are the only ones who I completely stand behind. The next duo who I want to talk about is Diana and Jake. I know it doesn't seem like it, but these characters are very similar. These two characters started off interesting and had storylines that kept you hooked, but as soon as they got into relationship drama, it broke their character for me. Like once it was revealed that Adam and Cassie were written in the stars, Diana just lost her leadership momentum, and instead of the writers trying to get that back, they just plopped her into another relationship. One example I want to give is when she started dating that boat guy, and you can see her slowly pulling away from the circle and basically wanting out. And I feel like that's incredibly selfish because she was getting everyone together and essentially pressuring them to bind their circle, which brought a lot of enemies their way, but when things started to get tough, she wanted out. Now on to Jake. When Jake was introduced, I can say I was fairly intrigued by him. You know, he was Nick's brother. The writers were clearly trying to set him up to replace Nick after his death. And you know, I was okay with it. Then it was revealed that he was a double agent for the Witch Hunters. He instantly had one of the best ongoing storylines in the show. Jake was a good character to use to help introduce the Witch Hunters and their motives for the circle in later episodes. But one thing I will say is, once it was revealed that Jake had feelings for Cassie, he had the CW effect and all his character development went out the window. His entire storyline revolved around Cassie now, and he had a huge personality shift. Jake was basically introduced as a crappy person. He didn't have the best personality, but as soon as his crush developed, he became very whiny and only sweet to Cassie. But the real confusing part for me is in one episode, he was head over heels for Cassie, but the next, he was spending the night with Faye. And finally, the last duo, Cassie and Adam, who are arguably the worst characters on the show, these two characters were one bad idea after another balled up into one. To start out the discussion with Cassie, she could have very well been one of the best characters on the show, but she was doomed from the beginning. One reason why she was doomed from the beginning is the writers made the decision to make Cassie, mind you, before unlocking her dark magic, the most powerful circle member. One scene that comes to mind is when Faye started a thunderstorm and it got out of control, and instead of having Faye stop it, because mind you, Faye makes everyone in that circle look like basic witches, but I'll get to that later. But instead of having Faye stop it, they make Cassie stop it, who only casted one spell before doing that. 
Another reason why I have a problem with Cassie's character is her relationships and basically how everything was handed to her. In the first two episodes, she already found her book of shadows, she already had a guy in love with her, and she became the most powerful circle member. It was hitting too close to Mary Sue for me. And the final character is Adam. To me, Adam is the character that slipped through the cracks with the show because for the most part, I hated watching him interact with other characters. I'd say the only characters I like seeing him interact with is Fan and Melissa. I like seeing them together because they broke him out of all his relationship drama, and he felt like an actual character. You know, he was running his father's diner, spending time with friends, and just having fun with magic. He wasn't wrapped up in Cassie and all that written in the stars bullcrap. When I think of Cassie and Adam's relationship, I like to think of relationship chemistry because these two characters had none of it. Their relationship felt forced since episode one. Every time I rewatch the series, I find myself skipping a lot of their scenes together. I was happy when Blackwell tricked them into thinking they were cursed and having them forget about each other's feelings. I'm going to keep this section short because I genuinely don't have anything bad to say about the villains of the show. You really have to give it up for the writers because some of the newer CW shows can barely handle two villains. This show was able to juggle five. And each time they introduced a new villain, it felt cohesive. You had the kids' parents, voodoo practitioners, the elders, Blackwell, and witch hunters. The level of threat each of these antagonists had outdid one another as the series went on. My favorite two villains are Blackwell and Eben, hands down. The level of manipulation Blackwell had is crazy. He was able to manipulate circles upon circles, and Eben's usage of magic throughout the series left me dumbfounded. Eben was using better magic than most witches throughout the show. The magic on the show is unique in itself. Like the primal abilities of the witches on the show is channeling, spell casting, elemental control, telekinesis, and potion making. Now, four out of the five abilities I just named are fairly easy to grasp. The only thing that's really confusing is the spell casting for witches. Now, some people say they cringe when they say spells, which is understandable, but I think I kind of get what the writers were going for when I hear them say spells like lock on lock and heat of the sun, burn like fire, etc. It makes me think of a movie called The Craft. They use spells like light as a feather, stiff as a board, and that makes me think that's what the writers were trying to go for when creating spells. And for the most part, I don't mind that. I think it's creative, but in my opinion, I think it would be hard to come up with spells. The next part of magic I want to talk about is circle magic. If there was one word I would use to describe it, it would be weak. Now mind you, circle magic is supposed to create a link between each member, and while the witches lose access to their individual magic, with two or more witches, they were able to use magic. But with a complete circle, it would, and I quote, greatly magnify their magic. In my opinion, we never got to see the true power of the circle, which is sick, twisted, pure, unfiltered dog water. But to give you some good examples, one, they couldn't stop a guy in his tracks with one demon inside him. Mind you, the entire circle were there. They weren't really trying to put him down, just freeze him in his place, but they couldn't even do that. My second instance is when Cassie was put under a spell that let Eben control her will and the circle was obviously trying to break the spell. The problem I have with this is the show is trying to tell me that five out of six circle members cannot break the spell. I know with six members there is great power, but I would think that five could do some damage. Even then, I would think three could do some damage. And to add more about circle magic, I feel like once they bound their circle, they lost some of their individuality. We never got a sense of how each character could do magic on their own. It was always how someone else wanted to do it because their magic was bound. I feel like the show lost an opportunity to expand with their magic and spells. You know, like since witches could control the elements, show them shooting lightning out of their hands, throwing fireballs, lifting boulders from the ground, or creating miniature tornadoes, or stepping away from the element control, you could have them astral project. And we know they had the power of conjuration. They could have conjured some illusions. And I'm like 90% sure they could do all of these and more. It's just that they'd rather use the same spells over and over again, like the spell Lock Unlock. This is going to be my last section before I give my end thoughts. So I'm going to be telling you who I think are the most powerful on the show and my favorite spells. To start off, I think the most powerful magic users on the show are Eben, Blackwell, and Faye. Eben for me is number one because he has shown that he could defeat anyone he went up against. He took down Blackwell twice, 
telekinetically put down three witches. He then went on to immobilize. He was able to summon, I think, five demons from the underworld. Now, Blackwell. Blackwell has been shown to be very proficient with black magic, and his knowledge in spells and rituals exceed most. He has been shown to know symbols that can keep demons in a sacred space, and we were shown that he could make someone explode. And finally, Faye. Faye has to be the most creative witch in the show. Her feats are nothing short of impressive. She has summoned powerful thunderstorms, manipulated probability with the ring toss game and casino night, her turning a fake bat alive. Faye has had the most strength and control when it comes to telekinesis out of everyone in her circle, and she had an affinity for cryokinesis, which has been stated to be a hard element to master. Burning star, blood red eye. 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 Focus on the shears. Heat of the sun, burn like fire. 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 I'm gonna try and end this video on a very positive note because I feel like I've been negative throughout the video. I feel like that the show could be brought back. I think one way that could help us is if we start a Reddit account for it. Reddit for me would be a great place to bring other fans together and express their love for it and getting certain attention that could help bring awareness.